of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Yeah. 
one of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
church, I want to invite you to sing along with me this song over our country and also over our homes. Come on now. Narrow Street will be hosting their All or Nothing camp. There will be exciting games, new people to meet, and a life-changing encounter with God. Register via the link on the screen. What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Is it a separate experience from conversion? What is its purpose? Find out the answers to these questions and more in our upcoming session with Senior Pastor Chu. For further information, refer to the details on the screen. Have you ever wondered why would I need a will? 
or whether it is necessary to prepare a will? Come, join us on Zoom as we hear from Pastor Wayan, who is also a practicing lawyer, about the importance of having a will. See you there. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi Church, welcome to SIBKL's online service. I'm Pastor Steph and with me is Pastor Sean. Hello, hello. And yes, we are on your screens. Yes, we are only online today. And I, I thank God for just the past year of hybrid services. We've had online and on-site. But today is a bit special, right, Pastor yeah. Steph? Oh yes, today is 19 November and it's the day that Malaysia goes out to vote. Awesome, going out to vote. And it's actually my first time voting. Oh wow, it's my third time this actually. Third time, yeah. awesome. And you know, this week is um, online because we are encouraging everyone yeah. to vote yeah. and not everyone's voting in KL obviously they'll be probably but most probably or most likely or 100% definitely going back to their kampongs um, to vote so wherever you're at from um, why don't you type in the chat where you're voting from or where you're at right now um, name me some states where they at Joe, Joe. I know there's tons of you in Sabah and Sarawak, Sabah, Sarawak. Then, right? Ipoh pun ada. Ipoh is not a state. Perak. 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 Penang. Penang. Kedah. Kedah. Kedah a lot. Negeri Sembilan. Yeah. Negeri Sembilan. We have a lot. Sembilan. Yes, exactly that. So awesome. Thank you all for also joining us for service. But before we go into worship, let's say a prayer to God. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to still be able to attend service online, God. And God, we pray that as we worship, will your presence be in our hearts, will your presence be in our rooms, God. So God, will you be pleased, will you be delighted with our praise and our worship. We give you glory and praise and honour. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Hello, SIBKL. Welcome to Church Online. I'm so excited to be able to praise and to worship with you. Today, we're going to give God all the glory
thank you, Father God, for truly indeed this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it that we are so grateful that today, this is the day that you have chosen for us to come together as a nation to vote for the future of our nation, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the Malaysians that have gone out to exercise the authority that you've given us, that you've given us to vote in this nation. That Lord, today Malaysia decides, Malaysia decides its destiny, O oh God. We thank you for your grace and your peace that has been in our country, God. God, I pray today for your favor and your blessing. Daripada Sabah, Sarawak, sehingga ke Semenanjung pada hari ini, kemuliaan Tuhan hadir di tengah-tengah kita. So God, I pray, Lord Father, for every voters who have gone out, O oh God. That God, will you bless every person, every voter, every pacha member, every politician. Father, that you protect their safety, O oh God. Lord, I pray for every ballot vote, O oh God, to be protected, Lord Father, that this election, Lord Father, will be clean, fair and safe, O oh God. That there will be no disaster. I pray there will be no uproar. I pray there will be no, um, um, yeah, no stirring, no anger in this place, but only peace, God. Kita membawa negara ini kembali ke dalam tangan Tuhan. Negara ini memiliki destiny di depan Tuhan. That Lord, because you are a righteous God, and we trust and believe, oh God, that you are in this, Lord Father. So Father, even right now, we entrust you with the outcome of this election, Father. Lord, we're going to trust that you have put in place righteous leaders. Sesuai dengan Amsar 16 ayat 33 berkata, Manusia boleh membuang undi, tetapi Tuhan yang menentukan pemimpin bagi negara ini. Surely, God is Malaysia's salvation. Malaysia will trust and not be afraid. And Father, we pray for the fear of the Lord to come upon them, the wisdom yes. of the Lord to come upon them. Pemimpin inilah pemimpin pilihan rakyat negara ini, Bapak di sorga. The Lord Himself is Malaysia's strength and her defence. Leaders that will uphold the laws of this land, we pray that you would give wisdom, such wisdom to this leadership. Melalui pilihan raya ini, negara Malaysia disatukan kembali. Pemimpinnya adalah pemimpin pilihan Tuhan sendiri. He has become Malaysia's salvation. With joy, Malaysia will draw water from the wells of salvation. We pray that the new government that will be formed will be of you, Father and that they will do what is right and righteous in your eyes, Father. That you're watching over our nation right now. That truly indeed, Lord Father, Malaysia's destiny belongs to you. To God, will your favour be upon Malaysia? Will your blessing be upon us, God? Gerejamu bangkit dan penuaian jiwa-jiwa yang besar-besaran akan terjadi bagi negara ini. Will we be a church and will we be a nation that glorifies you, God? In that day, Malaysia will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done, and proclaim that His name is exalted. As the Church of Malaysia, we bless the leadership, the new government that will be formed, and we ask that your peace and your favour over this nation will just continue to prevail in the coming days and coming months, Father. Churches arise, will we be a blessing um, to those around us, God? Gerejamu diperbaharui melalui pilihan raya ini kami masuk kepada musim yang baru bapa di sorga. Sing to the Lord for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Malaysia, for great is the Holy One of Malaysia among you. So Jesus, we thank you for Malaysia. We thank you for today. We trust in you. We put our hope in you. For you are sovereign God. We love you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. So even right now, church, as we prepare our hearts, Pastor Joel will be sharing the message, the word, this evening with you. Hi everyone, my name is Joel and I'm a pastor at Workplace at the River. You know, today is a significant date for us in Malaysia and all of us as Malaysians because today we vote for our new government. This message is pre-recorded, but I know many of us can proudly hold up our fingers covered in indelible ink to show each other that we've fulfilled our responsibility as a citizen of Malaysia. Today, we're carrying on with our series in the Book of Judges. And before I go on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you, Lord, that many of us have fulfilled our role as a citizen of Malaysia. And Lord, even as we carry on with the Book of Judges today, may you speak through me and the words that, I, that you've prepared beforehand. We want to praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So we're going to look through the story of the life of Jephthah 
and the process of ups and downs that he went through in his life. I'm going to be reading from Judges 11. Verse 2, Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. You see, Jephthah didn't have a choice as to the circumstances he was born in because his mother was a prostitute. Nevertheless, it was a disgrace to him. He always had to carry with him the fact that his mother was a prostitute, unlike his brothers, who were legitimate children. You know, if Jephthah, or anyone else for that matter, is born again through Christ, there is no disgrace, there is no judgment, no condemnation, because Christ has covered all that sin, guilt, and pain. Right now, I just want to take a moment to encourage some of the single parents here. You know, whether you're a single mother or a single father, and, uh, and your circumstances may be different from Jephthah, but in the same way as, Jeph- as Jephthah, did not have a mother, he may, felt, he may have felt like he needed to fend for himself. Sometimes you may feel like you're the only one to defend and protect your kids. I want to encourage you, let God be the father or the mother of your child. God is not gender fluid, but you know, He is perfect and His perfection will be able to cover for what you lack. So surrender yourselves and your children into His hands. So no matter what our background is, that doesn't define us. Rejection by man is not part of God's plan for us. So if you ever feel rejected, cast away from something, whether we are made redundant by our company, whether we are rejected by someone we're looking to court, or even rejected by our own family, as Jephthah experienced. These things don't define us. What really defines us and gives us our identity is our image in Christ. Let's go on to the next thing that Jephthah experienced. In verse 6, it says, Come, they said, be our commander, so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them, Didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, Nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites, and you will be head over all of us who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? You know, whenever someone faces rejection, there are always two types of responses. So either they will have the need to prove themselves and make every effort to to do that, to prove themselves, or they will back down, they will cower in fear, And they will just simply agree with all the naysayers and agree to all the criticism that is received. You see, Jephthah was a violent man and he reacted with violence. And violence here doesn't just mean that he killed many people and that he was a mighty warrior, although that's what he did, but he was a very forceful person. He always wanted to get his way. He knew what he wanted and he knew what he needed to do in order to get it. So I want to encourage us, we need to be careful not to ill-treat anyone because Jephthah was uh, uh, rejected by his own people, but in the end, they called up to him to fight. You know, I want to encourage all of us, let's not despise or look down on anyone because of their background, their circumstance, or their personality. We shouldn't also exert our authority on someone just because we can, because of whatever we think of them now. Because, hey, there are many people that, that uh, when it comes to a point of time, they would, we would need them, in the same case as Jephthah, because their life depended on it. All of a the sudden, they wanted Jephthah as their ally. I want to encourage some of you here who have maybe slighted, you know, you may have been ill-treated. Firstly, if that is you, you need to bear with it with humility and cheerfulness, and leave it to God to make your light shine out of that ill treatment and obscurity. There is something called Pisgah sight, which is having a glimpse of something that is far away, 
just as Moses caught a glimpse of the promised land, but he never attained it. But if that person achieved it, the honour is great. There are many people who have been in this situation and their stories have come to light as they became famous. I'll share a few examples with you. Firstly, Albert Einstein. His teacher said to his father, it doesn't matter what he does, he will never amount to anything. But Albert Einstein is the, is the genius scientist who came up with the theory of relativity. Michael Jordan did not make it to his high school varsity basketball team. He said, I'm going to show you, no one will ever work as hard as I work. And he's probably the best basketball player of all time. Walt Disney, he was fired from the Kansas City Star. According to the editor, he said he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. He is one of the most creative minds around. And today, Disney is one of the most valuable companies globally. In 1985, Steve Jobs was the co-founder and visionary of Apple, yet he was unceremoniously fired from Apple's board. 11 years later, he would be asked to return and rebuild Apple into one of the most unique and successful businesses and brands of all time. You know, Apple is worth currently over 2 trillion US dollars and many of you use their products. So I want to encourage you, don't look down on anyone. Don't even look down on yourself. Your time has just not yet come. In the Bible, it says this about violent people. Matthew, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have been raiding it. Versus the opposite of a violent person, Matthew 5 verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So the choice is yours. Do you want violence and to be called raiders of the kingdom of heaven or to be meek and inherit the earth? You know, sometimes we may be rejected of something, whether it's being denied a promotion at work, not being the favorite child or even grandchild. Favoritism still happens in this day and age, right? However, we should not respond in kind, you know, which means to do the same things to others, but to respond with grace and kindness. It's easier said than done, but it's necessary because it is the higher road. So I've spoken about how Jephthah was rejected and then how he reacted. Let's look at what he did next. The elders of Gilead replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. So Jephthah basically said, okay, I will lead you to fight the Ammonites, but it doesn't end there. If I do this for you and you become victorious, make me your leader, even after we come back from the battle. You know what was Jephthah doing? He was raising his profile in order to prove himself, as well as to gain the respect that he thought he deserved from his own people. Jephthah saw the crisis and he knew that he was able to bring them through the crisis. But even after the crisis, he wanted them to acknowledge him as their leader, the one who was able to bring them through that crisis. You know, sometimes we may do things to profile ourselves so that people will see us doing well. We want to look good in front of others. So we carefully curate our lives so that what other people see, whether in public, on social media, or wherever else, we want to paint a good picture. It could be taking photos and videos of what we do. Hey, look at me, I'm helping the poor. Take a picture. I'm helping with flood relief. Take a picture. I'm going through the jungle to visit some kampong in the interior, far away. Take a video of myself doing it. You know, don't get me wrong. Doing all these things in itself is good. But to curate pictures of yourself so that people think more highly of you, now that is not right. You know, people may not see our private lives, how we carry ourselves when no one is looking, but the question I have for these people are, what do the people closest to you say about you? Your spouse, your kids, your closest friends, what would they say about you if you didn't carefully curate your life? I would say to you, let your private life and your public life say the same thing. 
be the same person in private as you are in, in, in public. And that's what it's meant by integrity, being integrated between what is seen and unseen in your life. The question is, why do we try to profile ourselves, you know, to cu curate a nice picture? It's because we want to prove ourselves, simply because we feel like, hey, we are worthless, or maybe we, we've been rejected, or because of some other insecurity that we carry. I want to encourage you, don't blow your own trumpet. Let others acknowledge you, and even better, let God acknowledge you. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 6, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. How did the people of Israel respond to, to his request? They immediately gave him, Jephthah, an affirmative answer. They said, We will do according to your words. Command us in war, and you shall command us in peace. You know, they didn't take some time to think about the consequences or what's going to happen after that. That. I like to say this, this phrase, just say nya. Basically, you simply say something, you promise something, you agree to something so that the other person would help you or maybe even like you. You are just throwing out flowery words. At that time, the need was too great compared to the consequences of the decision to have Jephthah as their ruler and master. Now what happened to Jephthah after that? The Bible mentions that he judged Israel. He went with them to the place where they were all assembled and there, by everyone's consent, they made him head, they made him captain. And therefore, they, they enforced their bargain which their representatives made with him. But Jephthah, on the other hand, he was willing to risk his life for them in order to obtain this small honour, just so that he could gain respect in their eyes because it was not known whether or not he would have victory over the Ammonites. He didn't know whether he was going to win the battle or lose. The current army was struggling to defeat the Ammonites already. How was he so sure that he would have the victory? Or did he just say nya as well? I want to encourage us. When we say something that we would all keep our word, just as mentioned by the Merchant of Venice, you can believe me, I, I'll say I'll help you. My word is my bond. My word is my bond. Let's say what we mean and mean what we say. You know, let's look at what happened next. In verse 28, it says, The king of Ammon, however, paid no attention to the message Jephthah sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah. He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. Then Jephthah went over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave him into his hands. He dev devastated 20 towns from Arur to the vicinity of Minith, as far as Abel Karamim. Thus Israel subdued Ammon. So regardless that everything that had been said and done, the Spirit of the Lord still came upon Jephthah. The Spirit of the Lord was the source of Jephthah's courage, and in the same way, it can be the source of courage for us as well. You know, when we are filled with fears, when we are filled with anxieties, we need to fill our lives with Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit. With that, Jephthah advanced to the people of, of Ammon. He went forward with the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, moving him forward in order to confront his enemies. You know, in the Old Testament times, war was used like an appeal to heaven to ask God, who is in charge? God, who you be the judge of who is the winner. And he would be the one to determine the winner of the battle. So I know many of us may be against war, but it was something used at that point of time in order for the Lord's righteousness and justice to prevail. 
So regardless of everything that has just happened, Jephthah's victory was clear and it was shining brightly, both for his honour and for God's honour. God gave Jephthah an excellent spirit and he used that together with God to defeat the Ammonites. You know, the people had a unanimous choice because they made Jephthah their leader and the Lord came upon him and empowered him so that he was able to achieve more than he ever could, even though he was already called a mighty warrior. You know, I want to encourage us now, whatever good we have, God can multiply it to show His great greatness, which is far greater than man's greatness. Through the victory, people knew that God, that Jephthah had a God-given boldness, he had a God-given strength and wisdom, and God was on Jephthah's side. I want to encourage us here, regardless of our circumstance and regardless of the things that we've done or regardless of the rejection that we may have faced, at the end of the day, it is the Lord that gives us the victory. He will give us the vindication. So let's not look down on ourselves. Let's not look down on anyone else because ultimately the Lord is the one that is in control. The Lord is on the throne. Amen? So, now, even in the midst of the great victory that Jephthah received, there was something that happened which he would regret for life. And let's look at the next verse in verse 30. It says, Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. If you give the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's. And I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Verse 34, when Jephthah returned to his home in Mizpah, who should come out to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of timbrels? She was an only child. Except for her, he had neither son nor daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh no, my daughter, you have brought me down and I am devastated. I made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. Jephthah made a rash decision. Just because he was so desperate to gain victory, he said, whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, I will offer it up as a burnt offering. You know, looking at this verse, we must understand that Jephthah did not have a human sacrifice or to sacrifice his daughter in mind. That phrase burnt offering did not literally mean a burnt offering unless it was an animal but it also meant to say that whatever comes out the door of his house, I will consecrate unto you, Lord. And therefore, what was really difficult for Jephthah was knowing that his daughter was the one that would be consecrated to God. Maybe serving God like a nun, to never ever marry. In the olden days, and maybe this part still lingers on today, the sole purpose and the ultimate end of parenthood is seeing your children do well and marry well. So many people have this burden that is so heavy in them that they want to ensure that their children do well and get married. But do they really marry well? Are they marrying someone who will encourage them into their prophetic destiny? Or are they with someone who will draw them away from God? You know, being a dad myself to a daughter, the first question that comes to my mind is this. What kind of stupid father would say, whatever comes out to the, of the door, I will offer to you? Because I know for a fact that when I come home and I normally open the door, the things that, I, that rush out from the door is either the dog or my wife. Well, my, my daughter can't walk yet, but I know she would come out because of the smile that I see on her face. If she could run up to me, she would. You know, don't get me wrong. I've actually offered my daughter to God, but in terms of surrendering her life, her future, her destiny. In fact, the moment when she was born, I read the Shema to her. I said, hear, O Ariel, it rhymes with Israel on purpose. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. But to flippantly say, whatever comes out of the door, I will offer up to you. I want to say, don't do something like that. There is something we can learn from Jephthah's experience that we sometimes can expect God to do something 
we make vows to God to say that we will serve Him if He blesses us or if He gives us what we want. How many of you have said, God, I will serve you if you give me this deal. Lord, I will come to church if I get that job. Lord, I will join the cell if the girl I'm going after says yes. It's almost as if we are bargaining with God to bless us and give us what we want. But we need to always remember that God is sovereign over all. However, if we make a vow without counting the cost and thinking about the consequences, it could come back to bite us, just as Jephthah experienced. I know that we understand everything belongs to God. We need to surrender everything to Him. Even saying that and not fully meaning it or understanding the implications behind it could cause us trouble later on. You know, whenever we make a vow, especially a vow to God, we had better fulfill it because God remembers. If He were the one making that vow, He would fulfill it. That's why it's called a covenant. When God makes a covenant with, with us, He will fulfill His part of it, regardless of whether we live up to our part. When we make a vow, I want to encourage us, let's do our best to keep it. So the thing about this particular vow that Jephthah made, however, is that it's not about Jephthah alone. The vow that Jephthah made to God affected his daughter, his own family. His daughter had no choice but to fulfill that vow that was put on her by her father. If the reverse was true, meaning the, the, the daughter made a vow to God, being a parent, he had authority over her. He could disallow, he could annul that vow because he comes, she comes under his covering. But Jephthah was wise enough and honourable enough to fulfil his vow that he made to God. And I'll give him credit for that. You know, the story of Jephthah reminds me of what many of us would go through, myself included. We receive a great victory in one area of our life at the expense of another area. We work hard to get that promotion or that huge deal, but we lose the relationship with our family in the process. We fight so hard to get our rights, but at the end, we end up losing sleep, we end up getting anxious, and we are worried about the outcome, which is bad for us. It's bad for our mental state. You know, I hope that we all won't end up like that, like Jephthah. But when we achieve victory, our victory will be complete in every area of our life, that we will experience joy and that our joy would be complete. In the process, we will obey God and honour Him in all things. So I've spoken about Jephthah's response, what happened to him, that he was rejected by men, he reacted with violence, he raised his profile in order to prove himself, he, it, it all resulted in victory, and finally he made rash decisions. What then is the proper response for us so that the process of our journey would be better. What should we do? In our rejection by man, remember the Lord. Remember that you are loved by Him. Regardless of what people say and think of you, you are born again, God loves you, and He is pleased in you as long as you remain in His love. In the Bible, God the Father said this to Jesus, even before he had performed a single miracle, before he had begun his ministry, he said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You see, God loves us just as we are, as long as we have a constant relationship with him. That's the first thing. The second thing is this. Instead of violence, let's respond in love and peace. You know, let's not uh, go for revenge or go against uh, uh, people. We're not called to be fighters, but we're called to be warriors. What's the difference? A fighter fights for the sake of fighting whenever there's a battle or, or a war, but a warrior fights because he serves God and he's got to defend something. So I want to encourage us, instead of violence, let's learn to respond with love and with peace. That's the second thing. The third thing Instead of raising our own profile, let Christ be the one that raises us up. Let's rise up with Christ. Let God lift you up. Remember that promotion by man is only temporal, but a promotion by God, no one can stop, and it will be evident. 
that's being raised by Jesus. Next is replete victory instead of partial victory, where the people rejoiced. Jephthah himself suffered because of his decision, but for us, there will be replete or complete victory. We will have victory in full in every area of our life. And lastly, instead of rash decisions, we will have right decisions. You know, we will make the right decisions. And these are decisions for ourselves, for our family, even the people that we serve, people under our care. If we choose God's way for us without making rash vows and decisions out of desperation, we will make the right decisions. And I pray that all of us here will experience this increasingly in the coming weeks and months. Amen. So I believe that uh, many of us have voted today and even as I come to a close, I want to take this time to pray for our nation. And I want to pray for a few things. You know, even as, as uh, we just learned about Jephthah, how he made different vows and uh, he, he uh, did different things to his own detriment. But I want to pray that for our nation and our newly elected leaders, that they would live up to what they have vowed to do, they have promised to do in their manifesto. And also, I want to pray a prayer of blessing for our land. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you for this nation of Malaysia. Thank you, Lord, that you've blessed all of us. Lord, we want to thank you for this day as all of us go through elections. Lord, may they truly be a, a right and right, righteous government that is elected today. Lord, may your justice prevail. I pray for your peace and your prosperity to be across all over this land. Lord, I ask for your blessing to come upon this land. Lord, I just want to ask that, Lord, your, even as your presence is in this land, you would minister to us, you would bless us. And Lord, your presence would prevail over everything uh, in this land and over, across all the people in this land. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you for your goodness to us, for your mercy and for your love. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A royal priest, a holy nation, a people called his own, that you may declare his praises, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light.
to be a blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. God bless. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you for tuning in for service. You're more than welcome to join us on-site or online for service again. See you soon. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you. So we invite you to connect with us. God bless. Syukur untuk setia rencanamu dan rancanganmu yang mulia dalam satu tubuh kami bersatu menjadi duta kerajaanmu ku ucapkan berkat atas 
Malaysia Biar kemuliaan Tuhan akan nyata Jangan terang kemuliaan bu, ku ucapkan berkat atas Malaysia. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. 